Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, AK Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And today I wanna to talk to you about pot odds and go through some examples with you to make sure that you fully understand this concept. Honestly, a lot of players are kind of scared of the poker math in general and start to say, well, I'm a field player, I don't really need the math, or I know the math terms, but not necessarily what to do with them, or even sometimes how to calculate them. So today we're gonna to talk about this through the lens of pot odds, specifically both when we're facing bets and also when we're facing raises and talk about how to do this and some very helpful shortcuts that you can take away with you. So if you've ever heard of someone saying they're getting two to one or heard a coach talking about getting 3.5 to one on a call, these are examples of pot odds in ratio form. And essentially when you look at the ratio, the right side is your risk and the left side is the reward. So what you're risking in order to get involved in this pot over on the right and what you're risking that money to possibly win over on the left. So if you take a very simple example, say there's one chip in the middle and your opponent bets one chip. So in this spot, in order for you to continue, what would you you have to risk? Well, you're calling one chip, right? Your opponent's bet. And what are you risking that for? Well, you're risking that for the original one chip pot plus your opponent's one chip bet. So you're risking one unit to win two units, which means you're getting two to one pot odds. Now, if the pot was two units originally and your opponent bet one chip into it, then what? You're risking one in order to win three. So you're getting three to one pot odds in that scenario. And at the end of the day, all pot odds are really telling you is how much equity you need in order to justify continuing. If you have enough equity, you continue. If you don't, well, you probably consider folding, but you also consider implied odds. And we'll talk about implied odds in an upcoming video. But essentially, if you take the example of three to one, the way that you figure out your equity requirement, how much equity you need in order to justify continuing here, you take your risk divided by risk plus reward. So your risk here is the one unit risk. The reward is the three so one divided by one plus three equals 25%. So that is your equity requirement. If you have at least 25% equity here, you continue. If you don't, then you consider implied odds. And if you don't have enough of that, then you just fold. Very, very simple. So whatever you do, make sure you memorize these three numbers, okay? If your opponent bets half pot, you're getting three to one pot odds, and as such have a 25% equity requirement, right? We just did that one. If your opponent bets two thirds pot into you, then you're getting 2.5 to one pot odds. If your opponent bets full pot, then you're risking one unit to win two units, two to one pot odds, and as such, 33% equity requirement. Please, please, please memorize these. Trust me, they will be super, super helpful. And since your opponents tend to use bet sizes that are close to this more often than not, when you're facing bets, you're gonna have a huge leg up on understanding what your pot odds are and what your required equity is in a specific situation. So you can start making more mathematically based decisions as opposed to just mm, guessing or really having no math whatsoever in the foundation of your game. Game. And keep in mind that it doesn't matter if you're facing a $2 bet into a $5 pot or a $2 million bet into a $5 million pot. All we're doing is comparing what we're risking to the reward, figuring out the pot odds and equity requirement from there. This is so foundational and baked into the very fabric and math of this game and you have to understand these things. And it doesn't matter what you play. If you play live or online, you play cash or tournaments, this stuff is always, always, always a play. And even if you don't consider yourself super strong with this stuff right this moment, a little bit of time, a little bit of practice will go a long way. And this will be something that you just kind of automatically calculate at the tables rather than having to spend any real energy doing it. So one of the ways that you can do that is to work through my workbook. And I want to go through a couple of examples with you. So let's start on page 97 and go through some together. All right, so flipping over to page 97, we're gonna do this top example together. So the pot on the river is 600 bucks and they continue betting. And we're gonna complete this table down below as if we had faced each of these possible bet sizes. And we're gonna do this with multiple bet sizes just to get a bunch of repetitions really quickly. So we're gonna do it as if they had bet 300 into 600, if they had bet 600 into 600, and if they had also bet 900 into that $600 pot. So let's start with the 300 first and we're just gonna follow these three things. So first and foremost, what is the percentage of the pot of their bet? Well, they're betting 300 into 600 and that's half the pot. So 50%. Very, very easy. 
what are our pot odds? So again, we are risking $300 to continue. And after our opponent bets $300 into 600, we are risking our 300 to win $900, right? The $600 pot plus their $300 bet. And we know that our risk goes on the right side of that ratio and our reward goes on the left side. And we are risking one unit to win three units. So three to one pot odds. We also know, based upon the work we've already done, that the equity requirement is just our risk divided by risk plus reward. So one divided by three plus one equals 25%. Right, nice and simple. And if we proof this using a very simple calculator that I have available at splitsuit.com, we'll leave a link for this in the description box. We have the current pot size, which is what, after they bet. So after they bet, it's again 600 plus 300 for a $900 pot. Amount we have to call is 300. And what do we got? Three to one pot odds, excellent. Equity requirement 25%, excellent. Did that one correctly as well. All right, and then let's quickly finish out the rest of this table. So if they bet 600 into 600, that is a full pot size bet or 100% of the pot. The pot odds ratio, we would be risking one unit to win two units, right? We already did that one earlier. And what is our equity requirement? Well, one divided by three equals 33%. Excellent. And we can plug all of this in just to double check it. Again, what's the size of the pot after they bet? Well, 600 plus 600, 1,200. Amount we have to call is 600, and we are getting two to one, 33% equity requirement. Perfect, did that one correctly. Now let's do the final one, 900 bucks is 150% of that $600 pot. So this is clearly an overbet. The pot odds ratio at that point is going to be 1.7 to one. And the equity requirement, again, one divided by 2.7 is going to get us 37% equity. And we can prove all of that as well. Again, this changes to 1500. Amount we have to call is now 900. And what do we got? 1.7 to one and 37% equity requirement. So we did all of this correctly. And just to be clear, not all of the questions in this workbook are going to be this clear cut where it's a nice 50% of the pot or 100% of the pot, anything like that, right? Even if we look at the one just below it, we have 30K into 80K and 50K into 80K and 100K into 80K. So these aren't clear cut, super easy numbers. But the thing is, is once you memorize the basic ones, right, facing a half pot bet or a full pot bet, those kind of things, then you can more easily estimate these other ones, right? 30K is just under half pot, 50 50K is just over half pot in this situation. 100K is just over full pot. Then you kind of build the pattern. You understand quickly what the general pot odds are, your equity requirement are for things that are close to it. And again, you'll get closer and closer and be able to estimate with more and more precision. Again, things like pot odds, the formula never ever changes. You use pot odds in pretty much every single hand you play, either pot odds that you are facing or pot odds that you are giving. So these are things that you really need to be able to do well. So let's do another example together. We'll jump over to page 107 and we'll look at another spot where we're looking at pot odds, but this time when we're talking about raises because things look a little bit different and the exercises get a little bit trickier when we're looking at raises and getting pot odds against those. All right, so let's go through this bottom example together. So the starting pot of the river is 34K. You bet 20K into it and then they raise. So we're gonna complete this table down below for each of the possible raise sizes and these are total raise sizes. So this 40K is a min raise and it's 20K more for us to continue. If they raise to 60K total, then it's 40K more for us to continue. If they raise to 80K total, then it's 60K more for us to continue. So hopefully that makes sense. And one thing that I notice when people face raise Raises is they tend to panic, they tend to kind of start avoiding pot odds because it can get a little bit tricky to calculate on the fly and they have no idea where to start when it comes to just developing a quick shortcut and pattern for it. So one of the ways that you can do this is starting by looking at the percentage of the pot, doing a bunch of examples and starting to understand the patterns when you're facing a raise and what that raise size looks like compared to a pot size raise. Because if it's a pot size raise, you know just like when you're facing a pot size bet that you're going to be getting exactly 
automatically two to one, or if you're the one raising the pot, that your opponent would then be getting two to one. So it's very, very simple, but a lot of people don't know how to calculate what a pot size raise is. And if you've been playing a pot limit based game for a while, like PLO or Big O, you probably already know this, but if you don't, let's make sure that we memorize it. So in order to figure out what a pot size raise would be, you take three times the bet you're facing plus the tail. So whatever's left over. So in this situation, if our opponent were to make a pot size raise, they would take three times our 20k bet, that gets us to 60k, and then add in whatever's left over, which was the original 34k pot, right? That gives us a 94k pot size raise. And we know none of these are pot size raises since none of them are 94k. So obviously 40k is going to be much, much smaller than that, and 80k gets closer, but it's still not going to be a full pot size raise. And what we can start doing is understanding, okay, well, what are the commonalities of the percentage of pot of a raise? And then what does that look like in terms of the pot odds ratio itself and the equity requirement? And again, when we do a bunch of examples of these, and that's what this workbook really lays out for you, you start to develop the pattern quite quickly, and you can start estimating these things far, far better at the table. So let's just do them real quick and let's just pull out a calculator and make our lives a little bit easier for the moment. Obviously in real time you're not going to pull out a calculator, but when you're doing these off table, when you're working through the workbook, take your time with it, make sure you're precise and over time, especially if you just do like a few pages per day, you're going to start understanding and finding these patterns and being able to estimate these things far quicker. So let's do 40 divided by 94 because again a 94k raise would be a pot size raise here. So let's figure out what 40 is uh, in terms of percentage of pot. So we have 43%. Excellent. And while we're here, let's just do the others. So let's do 60 divided by 94. Gets that to 64%. Excellent. 80k is going to be closer to 100, but it's definitely still not going to be 100. And that gets us to 85%. Excellent. And then we'll figure out the pot odds ratio and equity requirement from there. All right. So let's first start with the 40K raise. And again, this is 40K total, right? Which means that it's 20K more for us to continue. So if we were going to do this, it would be 20K is our risk. And we're doing that in order to win how much? Well, we have their 40K raise plus our 60K bet. That's 60 total plus the original 34 that was in the pot giving us 94. So we're risking 20K to win 94K. And if you just eyeball that, it looks pretty darn close to 4.5 to 1. And I'd say that's pretty close enough. If you want to be very specific, it is 4.7, 4.7 to 1. And that gives us an equity requirement of 18%, right? One divided by one plus 4.7 gets us there. And if we, you know, just round things ever so slightly, you know, essentially one over six, 18%, pretty darn close, gets us in a totable, totally usable number. And we can proof this real quick. Again, what's the size of the pot after they bet or raise? Well, in this situation, if they raise, it's 94,000. Cool amount we have to call is 20K more right? Because our 20k bet, that doesn't belong to us. That belongs to the pot. So all we're calling, all we're risking in the situation to continue is another 20k because they're just min-raising here. And we get the exact numbers we just got, right? 4.7 to 1 equity requirement of 18% and we are good to go on that first one. All right, so moving along to the 60K raise again, 60K total, we would have to risk 40K more to win how much? Well, they're 60 plus our 20 plus the 34 in the middle, so 114. So we're risking, what, 40K to win 114, and that to me looks pretty darn close to 3 to 1. Again, the actual number comes out just slightly different at 2.9 to 1, and we know 1 divided by roughly 4 is 25 percent and the actual number to be specific is 26 and again we can plug all those numbers right back in here how much more to call 40k more and here we are 2.9 to 1 26 percent equity requirement good to go we can do the same thing with the last one let's just plug everything in real quick so we got another 20 coming in here we got another 20 in there giving us what 2.2 to 1 and equity requirement of 
31%, and there we go. And we should know, you know, again, this 80K raise is getting closer and closer to a pot size raise. A pot size raise would give us exactly two to one, which would be exactly 33% equity requirement. And all these smaller numbers give us a better and better price, right? Better and better pot odds, which means we need less and less equity in order to justify continuing. Now, of course, if we don't have perfect pot odds, we should always consider implied odds before just automatically mucking our hand, but this gets us much, much closer to one, knowing how to do the calculation, two, being able to estimate these things far, far better, and being able to start building an intuition of, okay, if I'm facing a bet that's this percentage of the pot, what does the equity requirement look like? If I'm facing a raise that is this percentage of the pot, what does that look like in terms of equity requirement? When you can do these things more automatically and through practice you're going to be able to, this is going to help you massively because you don't have to waste any mental load in real time at the table trying to do these kind of calculations. They just start to become more automatic and your brain almost starts to just do them for you, which is pretty darn great. So we could continue doing more and more examples, but I think you're starting to get the point. The honest truth is that most players get nervous about odds and ratios and they pretty much just end up skipping them all together and just claim they're field players. And while that's a cute idea in theory, poker is a game of math, so avoiding the math is not a long-term solution. But like anything in life, you practice a little bit, you drill a little bit, you're going to get much better with it. And that's what you want to be doing off table, especially if this is newer to you or you really haven't worked through it all that much. You want to do some drills, you want to run through this stuff, so that way in real time your brain's making these calculations for you, you're using less cognitive load on trying to do basic math, and instead your brain is able to spend more time focused on finding creative lines, maximizing your edge, exploiting your opponent, all that sort of fun stuff. So if you see the value in practicing like this, definitely make sure to grab my math and prefab workbook. There are more exercises just like the ones we did today, along with syncing these skills up with things like implied odds and understanding the pot odds you're offering your opponent when you're the one that bets or raises. Just visit splitsuit.com preflop to grab your copy and start getting the most value from your off-table study. This workbook comes with over 1,500 questions, a full answer key, and exercises that apply to tournament players and cash game players alike. Again, you can get your copy by going to splitsuit.com com slash preflop today. And that is going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for hanging out today. Hopefully pot odds are making a little bit more sense. Hopefully the formula is there and hopefully these exercises help kind of bring some of these things to life. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. And of course, if you wouldn't mind a quick like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate that as well. If you need anything at all, don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, as always, good luck out there and happy grinding. left side is the reward. So essentially what you're risking on the right to what you are risking 